So Ned rejoins the hunt. Meanwhile, out on the racetrack, Eddie Kelly has picked up the lead once again. Now, he has led earlier for seven laps. He is off sequence on pit stops. Led earlier for seven laps and now finds himself up front once again. And there is the second place car of Joey Miller. Here comes B.J. Mackey. Now, Mackey did lose a lap earlier. With a flat tire. Now to Jerry Punch. Well, NASCAR is going to bring Randy Humphrey back on the pit road. I mentioned he had overshot his pit box. He was trying not to block his teammate, Johnny Chapman, who was running second in as they came down pit road, and he overshot his pit box. Now NASCAR is going to make him bring him back in because they were trying to service the car, and it was over the white line. So they are calling Humphrey back in a tough break for the second fastest qualifier here in this event. Well, just a little more than 23 laps to go in this one right now. It's Eddie Kelly up front of the Discount Auto Parts 200. We'll be right back. Back at Daytona International Speedway. The leader is Eddie Kelly in that yellow car. Right behind him, the second place machine of Joey Miller. That's the red car. There's two cars between Joey Miller and the leader. And let's meet Eddie Kelly a little bit more by showing you this goodies Dash Series Spotlight. Hi, my name's Eddie Kelly. I drive the number 40 goodies Dash car. I'd like to help the youth of America that enjoy motorsports. Miniature Motorsports has a uh, youth program called Future Stars of Racing. The original concept was for, for youth, 12 to 15, to, to get involved in motorsports in a stock car-like environment. The cars are actually a, a miniature stock car. As much spare time as I do have, I devote to youth and racing and try to get young people involved in motorsports so that this, this sport can continue to grow like it is. That's Eddie Kelly, who right now continues to lead the race. He finished fifth in points last year in the Goodies Dash Series. His best finish was a third at Orange County. And Bill is with the pole sitter, who has gone behind the wall. Well, they continue to work on Ricky Bryant's car. What happened? Well, I think right at first we uh, had a spark plug wire come off. And we come in and we fix that. We're going to try to get our lap back. But we've got some oil coming from somewhere, and we really haven't found where it's at. But I I would like to thank Washington Apples, Exxon, the whole group, Albersons. They did a heck of a job. We've had a good week. We'll take it back. We've learned a lot. I want to say hey to my mama. I love you. We'll get them next time. We'll get them in Montgomery. There you go. Ricky Bryant had big hopes coming into this race, but they have gone up in an engine problem. B.J. Mackey looks to the inside of Eddie Kelly here. Mackey trying to unlap himself. And he definitely wants to get in front of Kelly just in case that the caution flag should come out. That would put him back on the lead lap. Scott Crayling is in 13th position there in number one. And another update on the 93 car of Randy Humphrey from the doctor. Guys, I reported a moment ago that one of the inspectors had told the crew they had to bring Randy Humphrey back in because his car had gone across the line. But apparently they have reviewed it upstairs, and NASCAR inspectors are discussing it. And they think he may have gotten the car back across the line before they were starting to put fuel in the car. So right now they've waved off the uh, stop-and-go penalty, so Humphrey gets to stay on the racetrack. Now, Eddie Kelly and Joey Miller need pit stops. And when they do come in, it's going to give the lead back to the driver on with whom we are on board with, Christian Elder. But right behind him, look at Huffman all over him. And these cars are running, racing right now at about 100. Oh, here's Huffman. Oh. Gets a look. Tries to grab on Keith Rogan. Couldn't quite make it. Right on the tailgate, tail rear bumper. I don't do too many truck races, Bob. <laughs> anyway, the last time by, the 21 car ran over 166 miles. Look at that, 166 yeah. miles per hour. This is third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, but it will eventually become the battle up front when those two that are off sequence in pit stops have to pit. There's Eddie Kelly, the leader of the race, and the red car, number 19, 
That's Joey Miller. He's in second. Now three cars between first and second, including Mackey, who has not yet got around. And Scott Frayling. We'll show you the speed of Christian Elder just a moment ago at 166 miles per hour. He qualified at a little over 159 miles per hour. Look at that. Three miles an hour different. Well, we see Eddie Kelly making the signal that he is headed for the bottom of the racetrack and a pit stop. Now, B.J. Mackey's hung in behind him. He needs to go up the racetrack. Oh, don't go low. Oh. <laughs> okay, here come both Kelly oh. and Miller. Oh, and we have a car smoking badly down through the tri-oval. And Eddie Kelly decided not to pit when he saw the smoke, but I don't think we're going to have a caution. Eddie Kelly decided that there would be a caution flag. He would make the pit stop then and not lose a lap. He stays on the racetrack, and guess what? No, no caution, caution flag. <laughs> now, Miller did make the pit stop. He is finding his uh, pit box down toward the west end of the uh, racetrack. Meanwhile, Crayling drops down to the apron. Jerry? And Joey Miller overshoots his pit box by about three feet. Bob had to push him back up. Remember, these guys aren't accustomed to making pit stops. They clean the windshield. There's a little bit of smoke pouring from beneath the hood. No car change. Get it full of fuel when his Pontiac is away. So Miller goes back onto the racetrack. Now, the question that I have right now, will the one car, the blue coming off turn four, will he be able to coast around this entire two and a half mile facility and where will he stop if he can't? He's right now at the end of the backstretch, BP. He's got quite a bit of distance to go around to the pit area. It looks like he's traveling pretty well. That probably 30, 40 miles per hour. Here's Eddie Kelly decides, I've got to make a pit stop, so here he comes, down pit road. Kelly relinquishes the lead, Jerry Punch. And remember his earlier pit stop when they had so much trouble getting the fuel to go in the car and getting the overflow can to get that exhaust valve open to let air out. Watch him again. Watch the gas man now. A large purple suit, he has the can, pushed it over his shoulder, leans into the car. Leaders on the back straight away. 3,000 foot back stretch. Kelly's car full of fuel, and he's away. But he, I think he's going to go a lap down. He goes right now as he tries to get up to speed. Well, maybe we'll see on the lead lap because Christian Elder and Robert Huffman are coming off turn four right now. But they're coming with a head of steam. Here they come. And Johnny Chapman. Chapman running back there in third spot. They cross the line. They're running 166 miles an hour. You know, Eddie Kelly, that really truly was the wise thing to do because yep. he's going to probably going to go a lap down. If the caution flag comes out and he saves that, he has a chance to win the race. That was a heads-up move. And because it occurred where it did on the racetrack, he had probably less than a second to decide whether or not he was going to pit. He decided not to. It cost him, but it could have worked to his advantage. We'll be right back. Welcome back to the Discount Auto Parts 200. Here's exactly what we were talking about with Eddie Kelly, the green car on the outside. He started down pit road, and he sees a car smoking in front of him. He starts on pit road. He says, no, there may be a caution flag. Let me go back on the racetrack. And you're right, Bob. Just a split second to make that decision. It has put him back to 11th position, the last car on the lead lap. Here is Elder, Huffman, and Chapman running first, second, and third. Well, I guess the one car made it back because I don't see him sitting any place on the apron of the racetrack. So these guys go by still averaging over 165 miles per hour. Jerry Punch. I'm with Joe Smith, the crew chief for Eddie Kelly. And Joe, that early pit stop almost gave you guys a shot at being out of sequence and maybe stealing one here at Daytona. Yeah, that'd been nice. Uh, we're just looking for a caution. We didn't quite get it. Uh, hopefully, we get one now. Not wanting anybody to have any bad luck or anything like that, but we need to kick off back up. Is it true you used to be Benny's Jackman years ago? I, I didn't know. Were you Benny's Jackman years ago? In 1973, and then I, I helped Mike Swain win down here in 86, and uh, Larry Caldwell in 88, and uh, was with George Crenshaw for a while. So Joe's been with all the big names in, the, in this series, so obviously like to give uh, Kelly a chance to win one here today. That was 
just 27 years ago, BP. Well, he's old, too. <laughs> just like me. 